Justin, the mind-body problem has been a perennial friend of mine since my uh, young days. I did a doctorate in neuroscience trying to understand that. And I talk to philosophers who talk about the intrinsic aspects of the mind that science can never explain, and neuroscientists who say that it will be just an emergent property. Uh, you've studied the cognitive science of religion and trying to understand that. What can we learn about evolutionary psychology that can help us to discern what the mind is? And is indeed the mind simply the product of our biological systems? When I think of evolutionary psychology's contribution to this, um, I think that uh, I'm not very optimistic, frankly that evolutionary psychology has a lot to say about where minds come from, frankly. Um, of course, uh, some of my colleagues will say, wait a minute, no, no, we can say something there. We can talk about uh, the sorts of selection pressures that might have uh, made it advantageous for uh, some kind of an animal to have a mind, mental states, uh, consciousness, um, self-awareness, that maybe these kinds of properties then opened up a certain amount of behavioral flexibility mm -hmm. to solve a wide range of problems. But that strikes me as just, well, hand-waving in a sense. It, it sort of, it must have gone this way. Um, because we have the result. Because we, know, we know or presume it has to be purely physical if that's your orientation. If that's your orientation, you presume that, and so it must have gone that way. You wouldn't say, well, it was just this... Uh, lucky happenstance that just sort of poof, there was a mind. Um, and you might want to emphasize that it's sort of an incremental process of some sort, and so you might have some kind of proto-mind. Um, mm -hmm. So there are some themes from evolutionary perspectives that might be helpful, but I don't know if they answer the really directly give us a whole lot of traction on where did minds come from. Now, you are very um, uh, astute and have pioneered the field of the cognitive science of religion, which can show how religion has developed, even if there were no God, because they're very naturalistic ways. Uh, why is it any different in, from mind, in, in the individual sense, uh, 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 from religion? You, you've already shown it in religion. What's the difference between mind and religion? Well, I think the difference here is that uh, what we've done in cognitive science of religion is without, as you say, without appealing to the existence or non-existence of gods of any sort. We give a naturalistic account for why people have a tendency to believe that yes. gods, for instance, mm -hmm. exist. So we could do something comparable with giving an explanation for why people believe that minds exist. Oh, but that's different. But that's different than saying whether, where did minds come from? Right. Cognitive science of religion doesn't explain God. Um, and it sure doesn't seem to me that the cognitive science of, I guess, psychology then would explain mind, where do minds come from, if we want to believe that minds even exist. But it's the same process, though. You're looking at evolution, you're looking at adaptation, selectivity, uh, you're looking at the result, the result being there is religion. You're assuming the, uh, the truth of evolution, and you are looking for ways that religion can develop as it were selected by evolution or cognitive science. So that process can be exactly the same when you're looking at mind, because you have a biological system, a brain that's developing, and you have a process of evolution and selection. What, what, is, what is the different methodologies that makes you um, uh, so, um, uh, so positive on the one, religion, and so negative on the other, mind? Well, because I take it that when we're asking about where did minds come from, we're really talking about, a, well, at least envisioning a particular kind of entity, a real yes. something, yes. not a cultural level kind of uh -huh. phenomenon, mm -hmm. right? And it strikes me that's the difference. Now, I don't want to sound completely grumpy about evolutionary psychology's <laughs> contributions here. I think what evolutionary psychology can contribute is perspectives on why does the mind seem to have the character that it does. Mm -hmm. So we might not be able to say a whole lot about why right. minds beyond sort of a hand-waving exercise or a just-so story, but we can use a similar strategy that we do in reasoning about other kinds of animals explaining their behaviors. They have to solve particular kinds of problems in their uh, evolutionary environment 
given their kind of biology and capacities. Well, likewise with our ancestors would have had to solve similar kinds of problems. Um, and maybe then what evolutionary psychology can contribute is understanding how the mind sort of differentially solves those problems and gives us a fresh perspective on just what are the right questions. Um, what kinds of problems were our ancestors likely trying to solve and how has that contributed to the kinds of minds we have now? So this, at least that kind of a research strategy has led some people in evolutionary psychology to decide, well, it doesn't make sense to think of the mind as an undifferentiated general processor, mm -hmm. right? It's not a tabula rasa or a sponge that just mm -hmm. sort of soaks up everything out there. We don't see that in other animal species. They seem to have little routines or instincts for different kinds of uh, problems that they need to solve. Well, we might expect that would be the case with humans too. We need to uh, solve problems like um, how to select what foods to eat and which ones to avoid. And given that we've got sort of a, a wide range of distribution of environments, we need to be very flexible with our eating pattern. But with that flexibility leads to a high risk of poisoning yourself. Mm -hmm. So you need to very rapidly learn what things are safe and what aren't and what's disgusting and what isn't and so forth. Um, that's but just, these, these are features of the mind. They don't deal with the fundamental aspect. And so I think that's what you're saying the difference is. Whereas when you're dealing with the cognitive science of religion, you're dealing on the broad cultural levels. When you're dealing with features of the mind, you're dealing with aspects of how it's shaped. But you're saying nothing whatsoever about the fundamental nature of consciousness or why we're subjective agents or anything like that. Yeah, I'm afraid that's right. I'm, I'm much less optimistic that evolutionary psychology has anything interesting to say beyond sort of general platitudes uh, in terms of, well, we've got it. It must have been good for us somehow to have mind. And so there it is. I'm just afraid that this isn't the right level of, of uh, looking for answers to this very important question.